Hey everybody, welcome to Matt Men, your source for all things professional wrestling. I'm Andrew Zarian. I'm joined by the Danny Tanner to this family, Rich Stambolian. Oh, that's a weird one. That's a weird one. R.I.P. <laughs> right. well, I R. mean, R. you like to clean. Head. Aren't you like a clean boy? You always clean. I am a pretty clean guy. A little bit um, of a germaphobe. Not so much a germaphobe. I just don't like gross shit. I think that's normal, though. Like Bulgarian men open mouth kissing you? I get that. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. Getting that's hit okay. by eucalyptus leaves yeah. in a in a sauna. Like, yeah. not my cup of tea. Not your cup of tea? <laughs> uh, no. I, somebody messaged me about the story about when my grandfather was alive, mm -hmm. he would have all these random Bulgarian men that show up at the house mm -hmm. and he would do like this money exchange with them. And I, somebody met, messaged me, he's like, dude, that's like my life story too. My grandfather did the same thing and I have no idea what it was. Mm -hmm. I was like, you know what? At least there's somebody else that experienced my childhood traumas. <laughs> there's always somebody out there. There's always somebody out there. Uh, this is a show all about professional wrestling and man, the industry is changing by the moment. Things are getting hot by the moment. A lot of news to talk about today. Obviously, the big story is going to be, and a lot of our concentration is going to be, about Ring of Honor being purchased by Tony Khan. Boy, howdy. Uh, and, and, you know, we're, we're, we'll go into that. Um, but, you know, before we do, Rich, why don't you talk about something we're working on with Double or Nothing coming up? Guys, so we're gonna we're trying to include everybody in this, and we kind of want to make something a little bit special. And you know, just to get us to Vegas, we want to be there for you guys. We want to be able to do a show. We have a kind of a stacked podcast weekend, but we at this point we would like to try to crowdfund it. And if you guys want to see us out there. You, we're going to try to figure out how to do it a little better this weekend. But for example, like today, if you wanted to crowdfund us with the line Viva Las Vegas on the YouTube Super Chat, that would be awesome, right? That money would go into like a fund for our trip for Andrew and myself. And during that weekend, we'll be doing shows all weekend with the Wrestling Observer guys and a few other people. You will get shout outs. We're trying to do incentives for anybody who's willing to donate. Did I cover that properly? Yeah, Andrew? I think you did a great job. Yeah, and also we want to get the boys out there too. We want to get MG Geek yeah. out there. We want to get Suncast out there uh, to enjoy the show and to kind of produce some stuff. So listen, crazy expensive these flights. Man, uh, I don't yeah. know if that's going to that's gonna play a part in this. I'd Listen, I think they're going to sell it out regardless, but I, I was shocked how expensive it was, and then I remembered it's Memorial Day weekend, and it's a very expensive weekend for Vegas. So... If you guys want to do do this, you guys want to help us out and get the crew down there. Yeah. Hit us up with some super chats here. Also sign up for the Patreon. You could you could fund this there also. But the super chats we'll be able to kind of organize and figure out where the money goes. Um listen, I think it's gonna be a lot of fun that weekend. And we want to keep the party going. So uh we'll have more information, obviously, in the coming days. Also, also, uh this Sunday is a packed, packed evening of a lot of Matt Men wrestling talk. Wrestling Observer Live oh, yeah. from 6 p.m. From 6 to 7, I'll be doing Wrestling Observer Live. Uh, and I'm I, I'm gonna, I gotta figure out who I'm having on. Uh, I, I wanna get Brian on the show because mm -hmm. I wanna do the pay-per-view with him for the first hour. But the second hour, it's a Matt Men takeover of Wrestling Observer Live. We're gonna be live from 7 to 8 Running down the car, talking about everything happening, obviously, in pro wrestling and, of course, on the show for Double or Nothing. Right after that, we're going to go, bam, right into our watch along. So we'll be live for like six, seven hours on yes. Sunday night. <laughs> Looking forward to this. Looking forward to this. By the way, Bob Rowe, 10 bucks. Hashtag Viva Las Vegas. I'm very anti-Memorial Day in Vegas. I think he knows how crazy Memorial. Oh, you know what? Did he get married that weekend? I think, I think so. Bob got married <laughs> in Vegas on Memorial Day weekend. <laughs> I think that's why he has the anti-Memorial Day sentiment, as he explained to us a couple of weeks ago. He was yeah. like, you guys don't want to go to Vegas. I got married in Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you to Brutal Bob Rowe, my attorney. We, yes, the, uh, the one attorney of my to the attorneys. stars. <laughs> the attorney to the stars, Brutal Bob Rowe. Yes, in 1996, um, he got married. So um, yeah. let's go into this, man. Uh, I I'll... I'll start off with what my day was like. Uh, yesterday, I got a, I, I had a, got a phone call in the morning, uh, essentially saying, like, Tony's announcement has to do with a tape library. Tony's announcement has to do with the fact that he is a quiet... And this call, uh, I spoke to someone within WWE also to kind of verify this. The call I got was through 
someone that is not too familiar with pro wrestling, right? More on media, like he's on the media side of things. Uh, you guys kind of piece things together. And right, he right. mentioned it's a internationally, it's an international pro wrestling promotion. Mm-hmm. And I was like, Ring of Honor? And they looked at me like, I don't know what that is. <laughs> I was like, all right. Uh, I know it can't be New Japan because New Japan has a lot of licensing agreements already and it's partially owned by a TV network in Japan. Uh, what is it? Asai? Uh, 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 I, I'm going to pronounce it wrong. <laughs> sure. <laughs> uh, 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 whatever whatever the station is. Um, then when I, I, I spoke to some people within WWE and many of them believe that Tony's announcement was that he was buying a Japanese promotion. That was not... That was not New Japan. So I'm like, okay, what's available? And you start doing the math. I'm like, well, DDT is and Noah. The rights are owned by one company. So and it, well, I, I think MG, if you're, uh, he just stepped out. The one time I needed him, uh, he it kind of happens when you, whenever I you know. ask him something, he's like, he's gone, like in a puff of smoke. I know. So Come uh, back. He did. He did the, oh, MG, what was the? Um, this is like a real morning show. Uh, mm. Our producer, MG, Geek, <laughs> you know what we got to do with him. We got to do the Baba Booey effect where he's using like like one of these mics. Remember when like Baba Booey would talk? Oh his mic God, was yeah. distorted. Uh, what? Who owns the archives for? Um, who it's owns the one library? Company. Yeah, I'm working on it. Looking, okay, when you get it, just up. just interject. So I'm okay. like, okay, well, a lot of this makes sense, and I have been hearing the rumblings of HBO Max. I know people yep. within uh, Warner Media believe that that's going to happen. Absolutely. The the soccer deal that. Uh, HBO Max is signed for live content is a, is a big tell here that they're able to do live content here. So, uh, you know, I, I think the HBO Max thing is still going to happen. My post, I made a post yesterday. I think oh, these are all things that is in the works. Uh, may not have been his announcement last night, but these are all things that are happening. So last night, Dynamite opens up. Tony Khan, his big announcement. Actually, you know, uh, a lot of ROH reps were down there also. So I started getting yes. that uh, around six o'clock. I, got I was like, answer. okay, this is happening. Okay, what's my answer, MG? Uh, Cyber Agent is the name of the company. And the- they they uh, they made an umbrella company for DDT, uh, Josie Pro, and um, uh, Noah. Okay, thank you. So that's essentially what it is. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, Tony comes out. He was fired up, dude. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Tony Khan was fired up. Eyes are big. Mm. He's looking at the camera. He's doing the uh, Shane's not here, which was hysterical. Um, that was good. That was uh, good. Yeah. So uh, he announces that he's the new owner of Ring of Honor, uh, the sole owner of Ring of Honor. And early in the morning, Sean Ross Sapp put out a Fightful Select article. Uh, Sean's been on top of this unbelievably. And he essentially like alluded like eh, Ring of Honor could be up for sale, uh, and the value is like anywhere from like twenty to thirty to forty million dollars. Uh, I can't remember the exact. Wow, Brandon, hundred bucks in the chat. If Cole doesn't win, we ride. Also, goes dark. Uh, does dark get rebranded for ROH? That's a great question. Viva Las Vegas. We're up to 151 bucks already. Wow. Brandon, thank you. Uh, the other super chats, they are more like questions, so we will get to those when yeah, it's our absolutely. question and answer. Thank, thank you, you so much, Brandon. Very much. Awesome. Awesome start to the day. So uh, awesome start to our, uh, our our crowdfunding to get us to Vegas. A road to Las Vegas. <laughs> a road to Las Vegas. So uh, he announces that he's a sole owner. Simultaneously, he put out a press release. And in the press release, he talks about keeping the honor, keeping the legacy of Ring of Honor intact. Mm-hmm. And he also said he's doing his best to find a streaming service or, 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 or a platform to provide this content as soon as he can. Uh, yeah. You know, ROH Honor Club is not the answer here. Right, uh, right, right. I don't think, you know, we also don't know what's going to happen with the distribution for Ring of Honor TV now that Sinclair is exactly. out of this. Uh, I, can, I can't imagine they're still going to keep it on uh, Ring of Honor on uh, Sinclair channels mm-hmm. uh, and essentially Sinclair offloaded this because they had some financial issues they realized that there's no money for them to make uh, it's been you know somewhat of a loss for them they dumped a lot of money in their staging and their production right before the pandemic pandemic mm-hmm. happens and you know what are you going to do with this 
now here's a big question what does tony do with this the archives listen the, the library the tape library is extremely valuable especially for aew when you're building a streaming platform that could potentially be your own or you know i'm leaning towards they're not going to build an infrastructure on their own they're not going to want to mm -hmm. deal with that they have a built-in relationship with warner media and what better way to have your product in front of like 40 to i think it's like 48 million people uh 50 mm -hmm. million people uh front and center when they log into hbo max uh, I think that's the most logical deal here. I think that's the that's the easiest and painless deal. But, you know, everything could go all right. It's business. Everything changes. But now here's the question. What does Tony do with Ring of Honor? And is it valuable? Is running Ring of Honor as it's a separate entity valuable? Do you think so, Rich? I think so. I think the bottom line for a lot of this stuff and a lot of the stuff that we cover is that pro wrestling is a tough business it is a tough business to get into it's a tough business to make work right i think just to piggyback on what you said before about sinclair kind of saw the writing on the wall and they were like hey eh, we're not really gonna push this forward as much as we could be a guy like tony khan i think is the perfect he's the perfect storm to buy ring of honor just because I think he, me personally, and I think a lot of fans out there, he can probably make it work in any unique way, right? Would you agree with that? Uh, Ring of Honor, yeah. I, listen, uh, this is he's not he's a he's he's a very smart man. Okay, right. Uh, I think I think he he understands what he's doing, and he understands better than all of us that are analyzing this because he's in it. But I, I listen, I, and I I'm a I the two thousands brought me to love wrestling because of Ring of Honor. I was always yes. a wrestling fan, but it really showed me what, you know, non-WWE really good wrestling could be. And those Danielson matches, those, mm -hmm. I mean, that 2002 to 2008, I was very much into Ring of Honor. Um, yep. But, you know, how much value does it have? And are you, hurt, you know, branding a Ring of Honor show, does it do anything? You know what I was thinking? AEW, uh, the, the show that they film at Universal, mm -hmm. uh, Dark, right? Yeah. Or is it Dark? It's Dark that they film there. Dark why? Elevation. Dark Elevation. I'm I so think, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I I'm think, so yeah. Uh, why? You know, that's a show that you could brand as a Ring of Honor and continue that whole Ring of Honor tradition with a lot of the younger guys. Uh, and then you're putting in a couple of these guys like a Danielson and whatever every now and then to do something over there. The other thing you could do, and most likely they'll end up doing this, is those reunion shows like One Night Stand. You know what? You know, yeah, the, the Hammerstein's available for everybody. You know, it might be cool to do a reunion show sponsored with an AEW umbrella in the Hammerstein ballroom uh, with the Ring of Honor talent that, you know, you get the, you get Homicide, you get all those dudes mm -hmm. in there. And I think yeah. it'd be a fantastic product. Um now, do you does Ring of Honor TV happen? I don't know. I don't know if they get weekly TV. I don't know what you do with these guys. Uh, it's it's a big what if, and it's a big you know will it will it sell? What's a more valuable brand? AEW is way more valuable than Ring of Honor. Yeah, absolutely. Well, here's the other bottom line too. When you think about it, uh, people always forget that Tony Khan is a like he's a huge numbers guy. You know, like arguably one of the biggest numbers guys in sports, right? Like he's I, a big I get, I get a little excited when you say that. I know, I know. I'm, I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm at the edge of the volcano right now. Oh, yes. You know, this is what I do when I hear numbers. <laughs> so, oh boy, he's getting all squidgy. So, that being said, like people forget about that. They think he's just like a figurehead, like a Vince McMahon or like a character on TV, et cetera, et cetera. But I don't think this guy would have bought Ring of Honor if he didn't see like that matrix within the numbers, right? And I think what he has planned is probably will surpass whatever we're talking about, you know? Let it rest a little bit. We talked about this a couple of months ago when the whole Ring of Honor thing happened about them kind of closing their doors. I think the first thing we said was, why can't Tony Khan buy it? And him looking at those numbers will definitely lead to something very interesting, whether it's the the tape library being available on HBO Max, whether it's like an invasion angle of talent, you know, it, there's going to be, I think, a lot of fun stuff to come out of this, you know, and I like what you said before, where that that early aughts style of wrestling that was post ECW was Ring of Honor. Yeah, well, they, they were. Yeah, they were the the, 
you know, it, it, it's funny because ECW kind of splintered into multiple organizations, you know, like Ring of Honor obviously played a huge ECW was the, you know, the remnants of ECW went into Ring of Honor, but it also went into CZW. So you kind of split mm-hmm. that company into two. Yeah. Uh, I, I would say, and then we'll go into some of the, some of the, the sale stories, but I would say that this is, you know, this is an interesting part of the business. Ring of Honor doesn't have the name that it does. You know, if this was 2019, you know, obviously AEW didn't exist in early 2019 in the way that it exists today, but this was 2018, it would have been a different story because Ring of Honor's value Mm -hmm. was a lot higher. Uh, you know, unfortunately, uh, between talent getting raided and it getting a little stale and the pandemic and, and the reliance on New Japan, they did not really create top-tier talent the way that they should have. Um, yeah. You know, what ifs, whose fault? You know, these are mm-hmm. all questions that you bring up, but at the end of the day, 2022, Tony now owns Ring of Honor. It, it's going to be, I don't know exactly what how he's going to do it, but historically, when you look at this, Generally, those companies die, right? We saw this with Crockett. Okay. We saw this Crockett in Florida where, mm. the you know, the Crockett name was way bigger. We saw this with WWE and WCW. They attempt, I mean, barely attempted it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, and ECW, too, it came back, and it, and it didn't really do much. So I, I'm very curious what they do with this, but the big story here is the library, the content yes. of 20 years. Oh my God! So, so much content in 2018, and I believe we were talking about this in 2018. Um, WWE was actively attempting to acquire the library or purchase Ring of Honor. Mm-hmm. Uh, this was something that Triple H wanted to do. It was a big Hunter push, and I think they were off on the price because at that point WWE was doing the standard for the tape library. And yeah. I believe, I believe, I could be wrong here. But for whatever reason, in my mind, it's stuck at three hundred and forty to three hundred and eighty dollars per hour of content. Right. Now, I don't know if that was their standard for everything, but I do believe that that's how they bought some of these archives in years past. So, you know, how much how many how much money is that worth? I don't know. I don't know how many hours of footage Ring of Honor has that's accessible, you know, that that they put out there. But. Listen, man, I think organizing this and putting it on an HBO Max and now you have, you know, your AEW content, you have AEW Dynamite, you have Dark, you have Dark Elevation, Mm -hmm. um, you got your pay-per-views, you put Ring of Honor on there, you put all the Ring of Honor pay-per-views on there, maybe you acquire, you know, you get the rights for some other content in Japan and you're looking at this and saying, wow, you know what, there's a little bit of a library here. You're not just stuck right. with two and a half years, uh, two and a half years of AW content where one of those years is filled in an empty building. Right, right, right. You know, I think also they probably have a good media plan going forward with this stuff, especially with their recent acquisition of all these like Punk and Danielson. I think would lend itself to like these up. It, they do such great work with those video packages. Just imagine watching Dynamite and then much like years ago when WWE would plug the network. You know, you can see all this content and more on XYZ streaming yeah. on whatever HBO Max or whatever it is. Um, I think it's it's very interesting, especially since. OK, I have a question for you. Yeah. All right. I think this whole thing is interesting. And. Do you think that WWE is internally myth that they could not get that library or. Is that was that Peacock deal so big that it's a matter of who cares? Um, it, it's definitely not a matter of who cares. I'll tell you that. OK, uh, you know, spoke to a couple of people last night and I, I would say that it was not a surprise, but it was like, wow, OK, I, I I do believe WWE wanted that. At one point, they wanted that archive. They really, you know, they they are the tape collector. They are the keeper of history. You know, the right, Library right. of Alexandria is is on Peacock for pro wrestling, yes. and they <laughs> yes. control that narrative. And mm-hmm. I think we spoke about this a while ago. I think we were talking about this when AEW was coming up, and you brought up the fact that WWE has an advantage in pro wrestling. They will always have that advantage because they control the narrative. Right. And this is the first time 
in the history of, I guess, how how we've consumed media in the last 20 years that somebody else has beat WWE at getting access to content. Uh, and this right. is a rarity. This doesn't happen too often. I don't expect this to happen too often. But, you know, you could see the pivotal shift with WWE. If they wanted this content, they would have gotten it. And I know that Tony probably, you know, paid more than what WWE was willing to pay for it. But it just mm-hmm. shows you the priority shift from sports entertainment to pro wrestling. Because right now, yeah. they, their 10-year goal is not to raid the indies and Japan for top-tier talent. Their 10-year goal over the next decade is to cultivate and create talent from within and having those guys be internal. Yeah, I think Ready. if this happened five years ago, there would be a huge bidding war. Oh, it, it, would, it, it wouldn't have even been an option. I think WWE would have, even a year ago, dude, I think WWE would have... Yeah. A hundred percent. So WWE was wanted this. I, I know. Mm-hmm. I know that for a fact. But obviously priorities change. Hunter's not there. And what? Who? Who other? I mean, you got Seth Rollins. You got AJ Styles, and maybe a couple handful of guys that were in Ring of Honor. But at this point, it's not the same. It's not the same roster that WWE had in 2017 and 2018 when they really would have used this for documentary reasons. Yeah. Well. There is an argument to be said that like, well, these guys are more famous now than they ever were. So it doesn't really matter to us, you know, but when it was like the height of the Adam Cole stuff, that would have been the perfect time or like Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish and all those guys. Sammy and Kevin are probably the most valuable one to them right now. Absolutely. Uh, But listen, man, I, I think this is a a. This is a first step in a interesting direction. Uh, mm-hmm. For AEW, this is and by the way, you want to talk about the business side, right? Let's talk about this. Sure. And I, and I and I sent this to you yesterday. What they did with this purchase is up the company's evaluation. Their value right. now is up because they have assets. When you're evaluating a company, you don't just look at their financials. You don't look at how much money they're making, and how much money they're. You also look at the assets that they've accumulated over the years. Mm-hmm. AEW, because they're a new company, really doesn't have too much asset. Because they don't have an archive footage. They don't really... Uh, it's a new company. And the more asset that you build, the more valuable it is. I'll give you a great example from my from my personal life. A lot of the hospitality groups that I, that I work with, right? Mm. During the pandemic, they reached out to me and they're like, okay, give us a strategy uh, on, on not spending money and staying open. And every one of them wanted to, to sell off assets. Mm-hmm. Vehicles promotional stuff you know if you're a club you're getting rid of your djing equipment all this stuff right and i would tell them i'm like why are you doing that and their answer to me was well i don't need it and when i do need it i'll buy it again and you know what happened right to these guys a lot of these groups sold and they sold for under their their value because they don't mm-hmm. have assets so what would right. WCW have been worth if their if their TV library was not available? Probably nothing. Exactly. By the way, that three million dollars story is such it's it's such a uh, BS story that they bought it for three million dollars. Yeah, is WCW. it a KFA, They bought it for three million dollars, but signed a twenty million dollar ad deal for the year with with mm-hmm. uh, Turner Turner uh, Advertising. So you know the price was not three million dollars. So you know you got to look at it in that sense. And Tony's a very smart guy. You know, if this is one piece of the puzzle, who else is next? I do think that they would benefit from having some sort of ta- Japanese content that nobody else has access to. PWG, Absolutely. I don't think that they're interested in doing this. But you know what? It's another product that the content is not available online. Right. Um, you know, you have access to these things. And WWE's network it's not theirs anymore they don't really care they're making as much money as possible putting ring of honor content on peacock is not going to change their business i don't think it's going to do anything to them financially if you look at you know that side of things but Mm -hmm. for for aew i think it's a big benefit and i think if if they do go on hbo max i think it's a benefit for hbo max as well absolutely because Listen, HBO Max has everything. It's a hub for so much stuff. And it's also a no-brainer, too, you know, especially with the Turner connection. Yeah, yeah. So this is all really, really interesting stuff. Um, listen, man, that Hall of Fame footage now, Tony's going to own it. His guy's going Absolutely. in the Ring of Honor Hall of Fame. You know, yeah. I, 
there's there's a lot to do, but I I think if I don't know if he's going to run house shows, mm -hmm. um, I don't I don't know how much benefit and financial benefit. You know, would you go to a Ring of Honor house show, Rich, or would you go to an AEW house show if they're in town? Ooh, that's a good question. I would go, probably go to the AEW house show. <laughs> go to an AEW show, exactly. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I I don't you could you can make you can make the name the the trademark into something. That's not a, you know, you still have the AEW guys there, but you're calling something Ring of Honor. You're calling a show Ring of Honor. You could do something. Um, it's just a matter of what. Man, are you going to get the Euphoria crossover with Ring of Honor now? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, that's what hard. I want to see. I want to see MJF on Euphoria. All the, I feel like within the next five years, you're going to see these dudes popping up in weird places. So technically, they're in the DC universe, are they not? Um, yeah, I think they should be, even though, um, I think Nyla Rose has a X-Men comic coming out in a couple of months. Nyla has an X-Men comic comic? I didn't know that. Yeah, she's co-writing it, and I, I, I forgot the title, but it's like X-Men something, and it's Nyla Rose and another writer, and it's, co it's coming out in like a couple of months. Very wow. interesting, yeah. I didn't know that. So, I mean, listen, man, I, I, what do you think of this? I want to get your opinion. What do you think they do with this? Oh, what do you, you, know, you know what? Let me let me ask you this. What would okay. you like to see them do with this? That's a good question because I'm I feel like I'm such a fanboy. And listen, I'm easy to please. Number one. Number two. Tell me about do it. I want, do, yeah. Do I want to see Dalton Castle? Yes. Do I want to <laughs> see the Briscoes? These guys are not under contract anymore. But I do want to see like fun Ring of Honor stuff. The first name that popped into my head was, oh, great. Does this deal come with Samoa Joe? Uh, I want to see that happen. I want to see like interesting, not not stuff that'll get shoved down your throat, but just kind of like fun fan stuff. Like, let's say the Briscoes show up and basically they're like, oh, you, you thought you thought we would just go away, et cetera. You know, like, yeah, we're going to show you exactly who we are. And it would bring a, I think it would bring a lot of those recent ring of honor guys like all that talent to put them on a big stage like this. You know, like, look what happened to Eddie Kingston right like arguably the one of the staunchest indie guys you put him on that big stage and look what happened right yeah. this guy is is on a pay-per-view with chris jericho fascinating stuff yeah. who's to say that couldn't happen with a lot of those ring of honor guys that were released from their contract i thought we were going to get a combination of ring of honor pwg lucha underground dragon gate and and uh fmw tony uh, Khan buys them all dude you know like there is a market for that, a very small market, but there is a market. It just matters, mm -hmm. you know, how much I'm sure Tony would want to do it, but how much do they want for it? Uh, D Eddie in the chat room, best thing, and I'm gonna the best comment I've seen stream on Discovery Plus. Lance Archer and Jake Roberts can ho host their own house flipping show. There you go. Every house they buy smells like cigarettes, though. They ha oh, it has to be smelling like cigarettes and like water stains on the floor. Uh, but they're they're actually physically flipping the houses. They're actually physically like... flipping, yeah. So, you know, this is a lot. So, obviously, in the press release, it includes the Ring of Honor library, brand assets, intellectual property, production equipment, and more. Uh, I don't know what the more would be. Uh, maybe the office that they that they I don't know. I don't know if they own the building or what, but uh, more details are going to be coming in the coming weeks. So they didn't announce the streaming service, but they did say that they are uh, they are adding this to their library. Mm -hmm. So that is implying the sh a streaming deal, and that is implying that they want this to be in a in a good position. I don't think this is going to be some rinky dink website with just Ring of Honor and AEW content on that. This is going to be done in yeah. the right way. So we'll see that in a couple couple of weeks. So very interesting. Yeah, yeah. I got I got a fanboy question for you. Yeah. Can we go down a two-minute rabbit hole of Cody yeah. Kayfabe when it comes to this? Oh, I saw that. Everybody thinks Cody's Cody's running Ring of Honor. This is his thing. Man, what a swerve that would be. That would be awesome. Listen, these guys are very buddy-buddy for a lot of years. If you watch Roads to the Top, it's a lot of bromance between um, Cody and uh, Fred Armisen, Tony Khan. <laughs> Fred Armisen is going to play Tony Khan in his uh, made-for-TV movie. That would be amazing. The Tony Khan story. So what do you think? Do you think that's a kayfabe 2.0 possibility? I don't think so. Uh, you know, I think it would be, man, what a swerve that would be. And it would be like a fascinating pro wrestling angle. But I don't think that's uh, the case here. I, I don't he, I don't think that's. 
I think he Cody did have would the have been, Ring of Honor. I think Cody would have been. Oh yeah, he did have the Ring of Honor. Is that where that stupid ring comes from? I hate that ring, by the way. The MJF ring? The MJF ring? I'm curious if that's where it came from, the whole thing. It probably was like the origin of that. Do you Maybe. think do you think with the the purchase of Ring of Honor, Tony Khan also bought the ghost of Jim Cornette? <laughs> he comes he comes with every every wrestling promotion, dude. He haunts you. <laughs> it's like the horcruxes, like uh, He just like tells Voldemort. you you're doing everything wrong. Just oh like, boy. Just, yeah, he just like floats out. Every time Vince is like coming up with some ridiculous angle, it's just Jim Cornette popping out like a ghost of him, just screaming at him. Uh, he's a soul. <laughs> so dynamite. Do you want to go into dynamite or you want to go into more news stuff here? Uh, let's see. Let's jump into dynamite really quick. I feel okay. like this is going to be a very AW heavy episode just because we have the purchase of ring of honor. And also Dude, we got Vince McMahon news. this weekend. And yeah, we, we do it. You know what? Do you want to do get the AW stuff out of the way and then we'll hit, yeah. we'll, we'll hit that. That, that WWE. Yeah, uh, so last night after Tony Khan's uh, big announcement of buying ring of honor, he also announced a redo of the main event of the first Re- ring of honor show, Brian Danielson and Christopher Daniels. A lot of uh, guys with two first names. A lot of name. guys with two first names. Yeah. And uh, 20 years ago, this match happened. Really nuts, right? And these guys still look like these guys can still go. There are like D- Brian Danielson is arguably the best in the world right now, right? Hang on, little production note. MG put out a tweet telling people to use the hashtag Ask Mattman. I forgot to do that today. And uh, guys, if you want your super chat, you want to do a super chat, we're going to answer your questions at the end of the show. So submit your super chat. It's going in the queue, and we will do our best to answer it. And also, like I said before, we're trying to crowdfund that Las Vegas trip. So if you want to super chat us with the hashtag Viva Las Vegas, that goes into the pot. Awesome. Uh, so, yeah, that main event, that first, I'm sorry, that first match, um, Christopher Daniels gets beat by Brian Danielson. That's a mouthful, by the way. It's very tough to say. If you want to say that real names. quick. Yeah. It's a lot of first names. Uh, and Mox saves uh danielson uh christopher Dan- uh, daniels mox saves daniels from getting his head kicked in are they gonna name john moxley john moxley john moxley now john moxley just, just to ruin it <laughs> yeah, uh, let's uh see. fun yeah, main event ahead. man yeah man i thought i thought those two guys work really well together uh young bucks win the casino tag team royale uh very very quick paced fantastic matchup between all these tag teams yeah very quick uh what did you think of that the tag team uh thing i loved it uh um, you think it was too much for two weeks in a row no i thought it was fun i thought it was a lot of fun it was nice to see top flight back in action um i was kind of like i always have like my little fanboy wishes and one of them was what if kenny and coda show up uh kenny's uh, I have some news on Kenny too. I'll save that for the news segment. Uh, you know Do what? You. you know what was absurd though. So the way that that ring is set is set set like at an angle, mm. and you have the ramp just, just comes up and meets it. So when they were like getting thrown over, uh, one of the guys from FTR, I forgot which one, was on the thing, and Jim Ross is like, his feet didn't touch the black section. <laughs> like one foot only touched the black the black carpet, so he's still mm. in. So he had to like shimmy to the side to take the spot <laughs> to bump. Yeah. Uh, what did you think of it? I thought it was fine. I, I I liked it better this week than last week for some reason. I don't I don't know why. Mm-hmm. Maybe I was paying a little bit more attention this week because I was watching it live, but I enjoyed it a little bit more. I think. Listen, man, like that tag team landscape is huge. So phenomenal there, right? Like, think about it. Like these are these are the best tag teams in the world. Oh yeah. Yeah, the, uh, the, the tag division is is so stacked with guys that people like, you know. And here's the thing, mm. like, to a WWE fan, they may not give a shit about the best friends or, or half those guys in the ring, right? But to right. AEW, those guys are over. You know, when Orange Cassidy comes out, uh, when, uh, you know, when, when any of those guys, like, they're so over. The acclaimed so over with that crowd. I'm a big acclaimed fan, by the way. I like their act. Oh, same I think here. they have a great act. Um, now I tweeted something out last night, and I kind of want to get your opinion on this. Yeah, I think WWE has conditioned us, like uh, like the older fans, I guess, to see a tag team and think, who's going to be the Genetti? Of of who? Of which team? 
of every team that you look at, right? Oh, like yeah. WWE has spoiled us to think like, well, somebody's got to turn on somebody, right? I don't know. You know, Matt, like, I, I, I think Haster has a lot of upside. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of these guys are great, though. But a lot of them are tag team acts, you know? Like, I don't think Santana and Ortiz should break up. I think they're a fantastic tag no. team. They've always been a great tag team. Uh, the Bucks, same thing. Uh, O'Reilly and and Fish could go solo. I think O'Reilly's the big, the future, right? Yes. Because uh, Fish is a little older, too, you know, and he's banged up a little bit. But I think, like, O'Reilly has a ton of upside on that side. I love Bobby Fish, though. It's fantastic. Same here. Love the but gimmick. With, love the whole look. With that group, with that tag team, though, you know, you could easily, I'm not saying this is going to happen anytime soon, but you could easily transition Bobby Fish into a man- managerial role for Kyle O'Reilly. Yeah. And it would still work, you know? Yeah, so you know we'll see what happens here. Uh, I thought it was I thought it was done really well. Uh, next up, you had the uh, CM Punk promo with the MJF sword. Wow, what a, what a promo! You what a great promo! You can almost kind of see what was going to happen uh, coming from a mile away because both guys decided to wear their brightest, whitest outfits. Okay, to the ring. So he came out. He came out wearing the white T-shirt, and yeah. which they should still sell. Which they should sell, sell by the way. They should start selling those white T-shirts, and I was like, "Oh, maybe it's like a it's like a glimpse into the future with him and Danielson." Uh huh. Because Danielson only wears a white T-shirt because he doesn't want to think about what he's going to wear. Right. Uh. So I'm like, okay, this is pretty cool. He's wearing a white T-shirt. Maybe it's like after this feud, he feuds with. Um. By the way, WWE Ryan, uh, our friend Ryan posted. WWE's terminated his partnership with Russian broadcaster Match. Oh, interesting. And shut down WWE Network in Russia effectively, effective immediately. Wow. Interesting. So WWE is, has killed programming in Russia. Um, good job by Ryan on that, on that post. He's going to be in Vegas. Listen, uh, if, we keep, if we keep this up, we're going to be in Vegas. We're going to be in Vegas if we keep this up. So... Sorry, I lost my. Uh, I lost my. Uh, where punk, I was. you were talking about Punk and Danielson oh, and the white T-shirt. Yeah, the white T-shirt. So I was like, okay, you know what? Maybe they're doing that. And then MJF came out in 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 all his white. Uh huh. The white suit. In his white suit, and I was like, um, what's gonna what's gonna happen? And then I, you know, you saw what a what a crazy spot, huh? Great spot. Really interesting promo from Punk saying, like, you know, I wake up in the morning and I look at myself. Am I the bad guy, etc.? And then him alluding to what? What are those wacky noises? And you know what's funny? All- <laughs> yeah. I shut down Skype on this machine. But uh, it's still pinging me when people message me. Um, Punk alluding to his past WWE feuds, and it sucks that he can't say the Undertaker. No, he was like, I uh, took the ashes of another wrestler's former manager and smeared yeah, them on yeah, his yeah. body. And I made an alcoholic drink, you know, and all that stuff. Um, there's nothing like a very well-timed nut shot in pro wrestling. Oh, he's so good at that, too. Right? So you got the MJF nut shot, punk bust it open. Uh, MJF takes off his, his jacket. He's got the picture of him and punk. Every, this is like a bloody mess. Punk, if you if you watch like the uh, the close up on one of the camera angles, you could see the gash on Punk's head squirting blood. You know, so oh like, my whatever God, they yeah. did, whatever they did, they got him like perfectly. And you know what? Kudos to Punk. He By the does way, that not promo, have to do that. Uh, MJF cut M- cut a 2005 CM Punk promo back to him. Oh, that's right. When he had him tied up, and he's like, he's like, I'm a snake. You know, and I'm um, the devil in disguise. I thought that was a CM Punk promo from 2005. He got the same exact promo in the ring. Very well done. You know what, though? That there's thought put into it, you know? Yes. And yes. I love continuity. Yes. And so, that's something that's always lacking in wrestling. Like people forget things all the time in wrestling. You don't have these throwbacks in WWE right. because they're, the way that their business operates is that they know that the fans will forget very quickly exactly except i think uh i think that's the interesting thing about AEW is that it's the place where fans never forget yeah yeah you know and it and also there's like an interesting parallel here too between like 
you know, you're kind of starting to see a separation of styles within AEW, right? Where guys like uh, Punk and MJF and guys like The Revival are like very old school, kind of like hard hitting, hard promo style guys, right? It's like there's not much choreography there. Um, and I think that works for fans like us. Yeah, man, I, I think it's a they're, they're kind of solidifying what they are as a product and it's pro wrestling, mm-hmm. you know, and there's an entire generation that was brought up on not knowing pro wrestling. Like, like I, real, I saw, quote unquote, pro wrestling. Like, like how, you know what, the era that we grew up in with wrestling, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, we we grew up in a weird period where we had this like toned down version from 92 to 98 or 97 okay. or 96, you know, whatever that five year period was. Uh-huh. That was a core builder for a lot of kids our age. Yeah. That got into wrestling. And then the Attitude Era hit at the exact time that we were teenagers. So it, it kind of perfect. <laughs> it, it was perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Because we watched it as a kid mm-hmm. and then we were old enough to understand like this more mature content or we didn't understand it. We just more uh, enjoyed it. I think AEW now is kind of filling in that gap for the kids that are getting out of that era of WWE yeah. the last 10 years. And now, you know, they're like maybe 20, 21, 22 years old and they're getting back into it because this is this is different. It's more adult. It's reminiscent of the golden era that everybody talks about. Yeah. You know, there's there's a lot of those elements in here. And, and that plays a part in, you know, why they're getting a million people a week. There's also something to be said about really not not relying on on the history of pro wrestling, but alluding to it. You know, like I think one of the things that did it for me as a teen, and this is also because I have like a somewhat of a collector's mentality, clearly, um, is that. When you watch WCW and you didn't know who a Jushin Thunder Liger was, they would tell you he is so-and-so from so-and-so. And And that would make me be like, yo, I got to get some tapes. I got to find out more about him. Yeah. Got to find out more. Same thing with like Eddie Guerrero, you know? And I think WWE kind of did that a little bit in the early 2000s. But the most you get now in the modern era was I think when um aj styles got signed they were heavily pushing that he was an iwgp champion you know and that was cool i feel like as a if i was a teen i'd be like what does that mean i'd do some research and be like oh man there's a lot there's a whole nother world out there you get that a lot with AEW. no you get that a ton with AEW because they don't have that tabooness about it you know you know why we got in the 2000 because jim ross was so familiar with the product and knew internally knew who these guys were you know you're watching you know Raw, uh, are they really going to go deep dive into, you know, Shinsuke Nakamura's Wrestle Kingdom defense of the IWGP TV uh, Intercontinental title? Probably not. They're not right. familiar with it. So it, it's a very different. And I brought up Raw. I don't know why, because he's on SmackDown. But uh, <laughs> this is it, it's just a different philosophy. It really is. Um, but let's uh, let's wrap up Dynamite. Uh, yeah. Thunder Rosa and Mercedes Martinez beat Dr. Britt Baker, DMD, and Jamie Hayter with Rebel. Uh, Wardlow with Sean Spears this defeated Cesar Bononi. So you're kind of getting more friction with Wardlow. Do you think he's going to finally turn? Wardlow? I, I mean, unless they do with this unbelievable swerve where he doesn't. But I think they have to. Wardlow has become a breakout star in that company. Um, they don't really yeah. have guys that big. Uh, you know, it, it, it's and obviously nobody has guys that big. You know, who do they have right now? They have uh, they got big uh, dudes, man. They got um, Brian Keith Cage, Lee. Brian Cage, yeah. Keith Lee, uh, Hobbs, Hobbs uh, Wardlow. Luchasaurus, Wardlow, and I would say um, the Bear uh, Buddies. No, I'm saying like Jack Big Burr. Oh, you know? like like real like yeah, yeah, yeah. just oof. <laughs> what I thought, what I thought I looked like when I would go to Powerhouse Gym and I would do uh, the gimmicks and I would get like really big, but I'm still small. That, that's by the way, there was this guy Milton. I'll never forget him. This uh-huh. guy Milton was so jacked. Okay, he was like he he was the size of I want to say uh, like bigger than Wardlow. You know what, Brian okay. Brian Cage? He was the size of Brian Cage. This guy. Okay. And he was a big time, you know, jacked gimmick guy. Yeah. And he got sick from doing so much. Oh, boy. And yeah. I saw him and I couldn't believe this was the same human being. 
He was like mm-hmm. 130 pounds. It's tough to sustain it, you it's know, very like difficult. Un- unless you're a Billy Gunn. <laughs> well, Billy Gunn is a he's he's from another planet, you know. He's from seven the feet tall. Planet. Yeah, seven mortal, feet tall. golden. So, <laughs> I think you know what though. I think if you get a big jacked up dude like Warlow and make him into yeah. a top tier baby face, I think that's a benefit to the company. Absolutely, but it doesn't like philosophically doesn't that go kind of with hand in hand with that Vince logic? It's, it's I'm going to tell you something, and it's a very unpopular opinion, but that logic works. Maybe not you to want the, not somebody larger not to, than life. Yeah, that logic always works. Yeah, uh, the biggest names in the in the business have always been gigantic, jacked up dudes. You that know, is for true. the most part, for the most part. Yeah. I mean, that's what that's what you know what it is. I'm channel surfing. Yeah. I stop at Wardlow, or I stop okay. at a Brian Cage. I stop at a ha- at a Hobbs because mm-hmm. a, a Keith Lee. Because you're looking at this guy, and you're like, oh my god, look at his size. How yeah. much does this guy weigh? That's what yeah. I tell my wife all the time. I, that's all I ask. Randomly, she we're walking weight. around. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, how much does this guy weigh? I'm so bad at guessing people's weight. Are you? How much yeah, do you think oh, I yeah. weigh right now? How much do you think I weigh? Oh, uh, I'm gonna say 160. No, 176. All right. Take uh, maybe the I'm. A, eh, you know what? I'm a little bloated. I'm gonna say I'm closer to 180 right now. All right. Take the compliment. <laughs> I'll take the compliment. Thank you. I, I, you know where my weight goes? Right in my butt. You know what? I disagree with that. You have a flat butt. I got a nice does, butt. Does Andrew have a flat ass? <laughs> you know what? You know what? We will we will on our OnlyFans, we will mm. have a competition. Who has the nicer butt? How much do you think I weigh? Uh right now? Yeah, right now. You're in the twos. Mm-hmm. Two twenty one. Two twenty one. Marry me, Andrew. Are, are you two twenty one? I'm uh, I think around like 276. 276. Wow, you're a big yeah. boy. Yeah, yeah. Very, very thick. Very thick boy. Wonderful. I'm also nine feet tall. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. All right. Uh, so main event last night, Adam Cole and Red Dragon beating Hangman Page in Dark Order, John Silver and Alex Reynolds. Um, very fun main event. They're really setting up Adam Cole, I think, to be one of the future pillars of the company. But I don't think he gets the win over Hangman this weekend. Yeah, I, I'm i going to tell you, I'm not really... I think it's going to be a fantastic match. I think those two guys are great. But I, I think the positioning of this has not been that important. Right? This pay-per-view? Yeah. It's, it's mostly... I mean, the big story has been Danielson. I mean, listen, if you're three matches, this is like the third on that match uh, on your card... Uh, as far as interest goes, I think that's a fantastic card, and it says a lot about the the pay per view. But the MJF and CM Punk match has really taken over as the top the the, the top thing that people want to see. The uh, Danielson and Moxley match is a top thing people want to see, and then obviously yeah. this this is third. But you know where do you go from here? Maybe there's some sort of swerve. You know, do, should should this be a clean finish? Oh, I think it's going to be a very bloody match. By the way. You think it's going to be? I, I I imagine that too. I I think I, I honestly think Revolution is going to turn into their version of One Night Stand, where ev- or like TLC, like a classic TLC, where everybody just gets gnarly bloody. Uh I think there's going to be a lot of blood on this pay per view. I really think there's going to be a, a ton of blood on this pay per view. Yeah. Uh, do you want to run down it real quick? Uh yeah, let's do that quick. All right, so this Sunday, uh, AW Revolution, here's the card, and uh, we're going to give you like our quick predictions before moving on. Um, AW World Championship, Hangman versus Adam Cole. What do you think? Uh, I'm going to go with Hangman, but maybe we see Kenny? Something you think happens. Kenny, do you think Kenny possibly makes the save? <sighs> or maybe he doesn't. Maybe Kenny, I think, maybe Kenny, uh, I don't know. I, I don't know Kenny's status. I mean, he did that interview saying he's really banged up, but, you know, we're in March already and the number and pretty much it was saying that he's coming back in March in some capacity. Uh, I know that they really want to do that trios title. Yeah. There's a lot so, here. There's a lot. There's a lot of moving parts. I don't know. I, I actually, I have no prediction on this match. I, I do think Hangman's going to retain. I don't. I don't mm-hmm. know how they'll. Do, how do you think they'll do it? Uh, I think Hangman retains. 
my my wild prediction is Adam Cole is about to win through um funny business, right? Okay. Kenny takes out Adam Cole almost like uh Austin Rock style with mankind getting the win. Okay. Uh Hangman is confused. He's like, Why are you helping me? Kenny points at the belt, basically saying, like, that's mine, and then gives Hangman the one wing angel, and then you have the setup for that, and then you get like the that adds more to the confrontations between the Bucks and Red Dragon, and it'll spiral out of control at some point. Okay. I'm into that. Uh, MG also posted the odds here. So Hangman's at minus 600 with Adam Cole at plus 225. He's at plus 225? Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, AW Women's World Championship, Dr. Britt Baker versus Thunder Rosa. Britt Baker at plus 225. Thunder Rosa at negative 350. Uh, I think Britt Baker retains. Also a very bloody match. Okay. Uh, I, I think Thunder Rosa wins this one. Okay. Uh, AW World Tag Team Championship, Jurassic Express versus Red Dragon versus the Young Bucks in a triple threat. I'm saying Red Dragon takes those belts. Red Dragon. Oh, um, okay. okay. I can see that. Face of the Revolution ladder match. Uh, key, these A lot of these guys are guys I don't want to see on ladders. Uh, Keely versus Wardlow versus Powerhouse Hobbs versus Ricky Starks versus Orange Cassidy versus our old pal, Turnbuckle Dan. Turnbuckle Dan. Who do you think Turnbuckle Dan's going to be? Jeff Hardy. You think it's Jeff Hardy in if, a ladder match? If, if the contract... Do, do, do it, your Jeff Hardy. Let me see. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> uh, why, why did it almost become this? I got to take a look at you. <laughs> oh, that's my Jeff Hardy. <laughs> that's my Giuseppe Hardy. Giuseppe Hardy? Um, If Hardy's 90 days are up, I would say Jeff Hardy is, is turnbuckled in. Okay. All right. Um, but other than that, I, I, I'm thinking Keith Lee wins. I would want him to win. You know, yeah. I, I think it might be, it, it's a great way to catapult him. Um. To like, you know, that, that title means something. I'll tell you that. You Absolutely. Know, that title does mean something. So we'll see what happens. I'm very interested. Listen, every every match is something I want to see here. Mm-hmm. Uh, next up, you have the TBS Championship. Jade Cargo versus Tay Conti. I'm going to go with Tay Conti on this one. I'm going with Jade. Okay. Uh, let's see what we got here. Um, CM Punk versus MJF in a dog collar match. Super yeah. bloody. It's gonna be. It's gonna be. Yeah. If you thought, I feel like if you thought last night was bloody, Sunday is gonna be insane. I think MJF gets put through the ringer. Who you think MJF wins? No, I think MJF gets put through the ringer and Punk wins. Okay. I, I think Punk should win. Yeah, but I also think there's gonna be some screwy stuff with the Pinnacle. You think Wardlow's going to come out and not, not you know, murder CM Punk and help him in, to some extent? Maybe he murders both of them. Maybe. Why not? Have we ever have we ever seen a uh, triple uh, Doc Christian Collar Cage, match? I'm sorry, Christian Cage and um, I forgot that this was a match. Christian Cage and Ethan Page is the last ladder match qualifier tomorrow. Oh, so that that's the turnbuckle, yeah. Dan. Uh, put in Christian Cage. Yeah, yeah, he's a ladder guy. Maybe Jeff Hardy comes out and just takes him to the shadows. There we go. As Willow? As Willow. I hope he uh, comes in like a real lunatic. Like, I want him same and here. Jeff. I want him and Matt to do the, um, to do like a really wacky gimmick now. Like the headbangers. I want them to come out like the headbangers. Well, I think, okay, so if you want to talk the Hardy stuff real quick. Yeah. As soon as Jeff comes, Big Money Matt is gone, right? Yeah, that's done. He's that has to be him. done. Yeah. So I'm. I want there to be your classic Hardy Boys, right? I want there to be Broken Matt and Willow. I'm willing to bet we get a Broken Universe match. Yes, I think I'm that willing would be to bet awesome. that they bring it back. I, I, I thought what a weird, what a weird concept that worked really well. Yeah. You know, they really introduced did. this. They they really brought this whole cinematic shooting. Uh, and, you know, there's something to be said about if they had not done it 
a lot of these like cinematic matches we got in the pandemic era would never have even been thought of. I that agree Undertaker retirement match, we would have yes. never thought of that. That was awesome too. Yeah, very well done. Um, I I think I think Jeff Hardy is an inevit- inevitability. Um, you got John Moxley versus Brian Danielson. I think this is going to be a bloody one too. I'm going with Mox on this. I'm going to go with Mox as well. Uh, Jericho versus Eddie Kingston again. These dudes are going to get the crap kicked out of each other. Uh, I'm going Kingston. I'm going to go Jericho, mm-hmm. but with a total heel turn. Okay, that's cool. How do you feel about Jericho's new character tweak where... Now, hear me out. Yeah. He keeps calling himself the big one, right? I feel like they're really, really ramping up toward like a massive like poop joke by him saying that. Is that, is that, is that what he's doing? Because he keeps saying he's like, I'm the big one. I'm the big one in, in AEW. I'm the big, you know what I mean? You're not the king of the mountain. All that stuff. I, I get this weird feeling where it's like, this is just a setup for like some kind of like diarrhea joke. I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, you know, Jericho looks great. He does. He slimmed down a lot. He, he looks really good. And the, the last match he had, I haven't seen him move that fast in a ring in a long time. He was moving really well. I'm really excited. Again, another match I want to see. Yeah. Yonkers. That's Yonkers. Eddie Kingston. You, you want to hear it again? Go ahead. I'm from Yonkers. Yonkers. It's me, yeah. Eddie Kingston. I'm from Yonkers. We have a different water reserve than, than Manhattan. Eddie The best water. Kingston. The, be- the best water is in Yonkers? Yeah. Yeah. Eddie Kingston is the living embodiment of the five boroughs, by the way. <laughs> he is. I love it. It is 100% true. He is the walking, talking, living embodiment of Queens, Bronx, Manhattan, Staten Island, and Brooklyn. Like, all in one. I know a bunch of Eddie Kingston's walking around. I'm friends with a lot of Eddie Kingston's, too. Growing up in I, Queens. Yeah, we both you know, know a lot. We know a lot. There's a lot of those guys around. And like that, people think that's a joke, but no. No, no, There's I'm not a, making a joke. I'm not, I'm not, it's a not a shot dudes. or anything. He, he is uniquely the five boroughs. Yeah. That is the epitome of the fight. That, that's like, if you combine them all, is Eddie Kingston. He, he's like the, the song at the end of the Bruce Springsteen song at the end of The Wrestler. Okay. You know? <laughs> like, if you hang out by a bodega, you've seen me. If yeah, you yeah, hang yeah. out by the OTB, you've seen me. Yeah. If you, you know what I mean? Like, if you're hanging out on Bell Boulevard at, at, at a dive bar, you see me. Yeah. If you're waiting for the Tim shop to open, you've seen me. <laughs> I love it, man. What, a, what, I'm so happy he's, he's, catapulted into this position same here uh and you have darby allen sting and sammy interesting tag team versus uh a h f o can i tell you something i don't care about this match you know what me neither man okay i i I really thought that i missed like a week of something good happening i i don't i don't like that sammy's tagging with like i feel like it's just a match for a match like to get him on the card uh but listen man Mm. Tornado Trios tag match. So, Listen, all right. People want to see Stang. Stang. People want to see the Stanger. Uh, uh, what else AW, we got AW coming to new markets this summer. Dynamite Los Angeles at the Forum. June 1st. Rampage in Ontario, California at the Toyota Arena. Mm-hmm. June 4th. And Dynamite and Rampage in Detroit, Michigan at the Little, Little Caesars Arena on June 29th. I want. I got a little feel good story about this. Oh, uh, talk to me. Uh, one of our viewers and, and uh, DM me on Twitter, and he was like, "Hey, listen." He's like, I, "I, I, this is like a weird thing, but maybe you could help me out." Um, they're from the area in Detroit, and he had message Cody, and he's like, "Listen, my son's a big fan. Um, I would love. To, can you let me know when we're coming? When you're coming to Detroit?" And Cody was like, "Listen, I'll do you one better. I'll hook you up." When, when, when we're in Detroit, I'll hook you guys up with tickets or whatever he was hooking them up with. He mm. reached out to me, um, and I reached out to somebody at AEW, and they were going to look into it. Cody got back to him, and Cody's like, don't worry about it. I got you. Okay? Wow. Says a lot about his character. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. Just want to put that out. I know it's, uh, it's a little uh, insighty stuff, but just shows you the character of people. Yeah. Yeah, it really does. Stuff like that goes a long way. Yeah. Love it. By the way, uh, I think we're going this Saturday to the Garden. Oh, that's a that's happening. That's happening. I think it's happening. I'll, All right. Yeah. 
Let me know if oh, that's uh, that's happening. Take a, take a little, take a little, uh, little, uh, little twenty five milligram edible. Have a couple oh, of perfect, beers. Yeah. Get a hot dog for like forty dollars at MSG. Uh, that's the only way to to do live wrestling. They, I want. I want. I want to. I want Brock Lesnar. Like this is what's gonna happen. I'm gonna. I'm gonna have a couple uh-huh. drinks. I'm gonna take that yeah. edible and I'm gonna. It's gonna uh-huh. kick. It's gonna kick uh-huh. at the right uh-huh. time when Brock Lesnar's yeah. dinosaur music hits. <laughs> and he's gonna come out, and all I'm gonna see is Goro. <laughs> From oh my god! Like he's gonna have multiple arms. That that's mm-hmm. what I'm looking forward to. Yeah, I, I if we can I make that happen, that'd be a lot Mortal of fun. Kombat. I want to hallucinate all of Mortal Kombat, like all the characters. During are the show. these are these seats comparable to the seats we got last time for MSG? I don't know. I have no idea. The last time it was fantastic seats. Oh, they were great seats. They they were open bar. Oh my yeah. oh my gosh. Um, let's see. What else do we have here, Andrew, as far as like these news? Oh, right. By the way, that little Caesar's yeah. Arena is made of pizza. It is the whole thing. <laughs> stuff crust, dude. It's all stuff crust. The pillars are all stuff crust. <laughs> no wonder that city's falling apart. Uh, SmackDown news. Brock Lesnar, Roman Reigns had a con- uh, had a contract signing. Brock beat up the security. Naomi okay. and Sasha reunited as a team to challenge for the tag titles. Mm-hmm. McMahon is going on Pat McAfee's show. Today at 2 p.m. Oh boy, this is gonna start an angle. Uh, yes. The story is that Vince McMahon, at the age of 75, will be competing in some sort of match. Now, obviously, there's gonna be a ton of smoke and mirrors here. Um, once again, mm. what is happening? Smoke with and mirrors. A lot of uh, once again, smoke <laughs> and mirrors. Uh, this is. Uh, I mean, is he gonna come out jacked? Can you imagine? He comes out shirtless. <sighs> Doing one of these he sh- again? Doing he shredded, dude. So I, <laughs> I would not be surprised. Did you just turn him into Goldberg? Ah. Do you want to see Vince versus Goldberg? <laughs> I want to see Vince McMahon come out as Goldberg in the underwear. Oh, the man. doing the kicks, doing the kicks. I want to see Vince McMahon throw a kick. <laughs> uh, a I, I think that's the last thing you want to see. Ah. All right, so uh, that's at two p.m. today. So I'm sure there's a lot mm. of news that's going to come out of there. Uh, WrestleMania update. All right. WrestleMania is touting the main event as the biggest WrestleMania match of all time. It's a winner take all. They're calling it a unification match. There you go. I don't know what this means. Um, maybe short term, uh, because it's not, it's not a double champion. It's a unified champion. So do you walk around with two belts and defend both belts? I don't know. They're going to call them uh, Brocky Tool Belts? Why not bring back the unified title? Why not bring the undisputed title? Yes. I love that belt. That You know what? Underrated. Only got a couple years out of that belt. John Cena had to ruin that whole effing thing with that stupid spinner. It's a big boy belt, too, man. Like, that belt was, like, thick. They made massive. it small. I think the Lesnar one was big, but I think when Eddie had it, they made it smaller. Or it was a smaller oh, version. interesting. Okay. Yeah. So there's one of them that's, I think, version two is huge. I mean, it's yeah. like monstrous in size uh i don't know Let, let's see what happens i'm curious do we get a new belt do we get a new title belt you know you know what would be cool though mm. like occasionally you unify this title right and i'm thinking as a as like marketing yeah yeah you bring a unified title out you could bring like the old like the undisputed championship or something yeah that symbolizes a unified title and then when they lose one of them that title goes away forever it's gone yeah uh, until you unify again and then you bring, you know, that, and you make it like a special commemorative title. You sell a whole mm-hmm. buttload of these at like $1,500 because WWE will do that. And they make a ton of money off of it. Some I people think agree. The gold is coming back. I don't think that's accurate at all. I don't think they no, want to go back to that. Dead and buried. Dead and yeah. buried. I think if anything, if they want to do something cool, Eagle Wing belt, but I doubt that's going to happen too. I doubt it too. Yeah. All right, Pat McAfee, Vince McMahon is listed internally as a match. This is the Austin level act that people were talking about. This is it. I That's mean, not I guess Austin. It, you know what though? That's not. I mean, this is an Austin level act, right? If yeah. you're yeah. talking about like a big match, like Vince McMahon is 76 years old. Right? All right, whatever. You're gonna they're gonna do something pretty cool. AJ Styles versus Edge. Very excited for this. Edge turned heel. He looks insane. Oh yeah, gnarly. Oh, he looks. He looks like a nutty guy. He does look like a nutty guy. Oh, crazy. <laughs> the, the eyes and the hair and the makeup. You take, you take talent to play Frankenstein? It's all makeup and grunting. Where are you going with this? Is Ed Edge Wood. turning into a Frankenstein? Yeah. <laughs> it's Ed Wood. 
Karloff does not deserve to smell my shit. I do enjoy it. I love I love heel edge. Oh yeah, very cool stuff. You know what? Good match for AJ too. Yeah. Signed a contract, signed a big deal. Wrestling edge on the pay-per-view. Naomi and Sasha versus Carmella and Zelina for the Women's Tag Team Championship. Announced for night one. We got Ronda and Charlotte, Becky and Bianca, Miz and Logan Paul versus the Mysterio Boys. Night two, <laughs> Roman and Brock unassigned. Zelina and Carmella mm-hmm. versus Sasha and Naomi. Uh, well, that is not true. Oh, yeah. Zelina and Carmella is unassigned and Edge and AJ is unassigned. Put it on night two, dude. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, it depends, right? Where's Austin going and where's Vince going? Obviously, they won't be on the same night. Yeah. Where you do, do you Austin place? Where do you place Austin on the card, by the way? Uh, I think it has to be like third to the top. Not the top top? No, no. No, because I don't think it's going to be that kind of match. Third to the top. Buffer in between, right? Yeah, I think you use it as a buffer, but like it's not like a like a go to the bathroom buffer. You know, sometimes they do that when the card is so sad. Mm. Listen, man, this is a really strong card too. It's this very good. Very, it's going to be a lot. This of fun. is a very good WrestleMania card for two nights. You're talking. Uh, forget. It, I'm talking on paper, right? On paper, you look at this on paper, and you're like, mm-hmm. okay, you got AJ and Edge, you got Roman and Brock with with a stipulation we haven't seen them do. Ronda and Charlotte, people want to see. Becky and Bianca, people want to see. AJ Edge, okay, people want to see. Austin is going to be a, a, a interesting concept, and McMahon mm-hmm. is going to be a train a, a train wreck. Wait, but know? a fun train wreck. A fun train wreck. Yeah, not in a bad way. Not in a bad way. Um, let's see what else we got here. We could skip NXT. NXT highlights. Yeah, sure. We don't need to do that. Uh, next Tuesday is NXT Roadblock. Braun Breaker defends his title in a triple threat match against... Dolph Ziggler and Tommaso <laughs> Ciampa. Uh, NXT Tag Team Championship Imperium defends it against the challengers, the Creed brothers, and LA Knight and Grayson Waller. Uh, I think LA Knight is coming up soon. Yeah, I think so too. Listen, I mean, with, uh, with Finn winning the US title on Monday, I think LA Knight would be such a great opponent for him. You know what? <clears throat> Uh, this is what I'm thinking. Exactly, exactly your point. I think what you do with him, you have him hold on to the title for a while. By the way, not to take away from from our mm-hmm. boy, our one of our favorites, yeah, Damian, Damian Priest. Priest. Uh, one, uh, I thought that promo he cut two weeks ago was stellar. I think that was his best work in the company. I thought they solidified him as a top guy, and then you know, obviously, he dropped the title. So this is going to go back and forth, but. You know, you have him in the mix. You bring in maybe Ciampa comes in the mix. Maybe LA Knight comes in the mix. You make this like the NXT guys fighting for this title and putting on some really good matches. I'm all cool with that. Very cool stuff. Also, uh, I think we reported this earlier. Uh, WWE is shutting down WWE Network in Russia and um, Mm -hmm. along with everybody else shutting down their content in Russia. So let's go into where do you want to go? You want to do Q&A's? Let's do Q&A. We got a lot of questions lined up. Um, I want to do B's that... and Z's. I don't want to do. You want to do some B's and Z's? Yeah, let's do some <laughs> B's and Z's. Guys, send us your B's and Z's. All right, guys, submit your questions. Hit the super chat. We'll do our best to answer all your questions. We're almost at two hundred dollars today on the show. Let's hit two hundred, guys. Let's try to get there. Yeah, let's hit seven hundred. <laughs> that that pays. That two hundred dollars is going to pay for MG Geek uh, for either MG Geek or Suncast to get a flight from Detroit to uh nebraska so we still need to get them the other way (laughs) uh like we said before at the top of the show guys uh we're trying to get this vegas trip going today's our litmus test uh if you want to super chat us with the hashtag viva las vegas that goes right into the fund to get your boys to vegas so we will give you shout outs we're gonna do a lot of incentive stuff and as far as the questions go if you want feel free to super chat us for questions too you'll be right at the top and uh we got a couple from the beginning of the show, and uh, let's go right into it. Uh, but first, Bachelor 3000 is always a Don 99. I think he called us his sweet Cucamongas today. We are his from Rancho Cucamonga? Sure. <laughs> Rancho Cucamonga, uh, you're on the air. Um, we got Joel Wood, 1999. Thanks, Joel. Let's see. I'm going to send this to the, there to we the go. screen. It's funny to me. Tony buys Ring of Honor to give him an excuse. No, no, can you just do me a favor? 
Yeah. Do me a favor. Can you do it yeah, in yeah. like a voice? Yeah, yeah. Do it yeah, in a voice. voice? Uh, do what a voice. voice. I don't know. <sighs> All right. Uh, this is <laughs> 1999 from Joe Wood. You know, it's funny to me. <laughs> there you go. Tony buys Ring of Honor to give him an excuse just to sign more guys and just stick the ones he doesn't use in Ring of Honor. Tony's becoming more like Vince McMahon and doing the same stuff Vince did, and nobody says nothing. Is that good? Uh, I think that was good. Uh, it's funny <laughs> to me. Tony buys Ring of Honor to give him an excuse just to sign more guys. I don't think it's to sign more guys. I honestly don't think he, he had the roster in mind with the signing. I think it's more of... Uh, evaluating your value as a company by having assets and also building a streaming platform, which is what they're doing. What what That's the plan here is to build archive footage for streaming. You can't really do that with just a year and a half or two years of Dynamite or three, you know, coming up on three years. Uh, yeah. and, and most of that is in an empty building. You can't do that with only... How many pay-per-views have they had? Uh, 12? <sighs> Yeah, like not even, right? Like you don't you don't really have much here and you need to build it. Obviously they have some the trademarks, the intellectual property, there's value in that. Uh the toy side of things, people are not remembering. You know, they have a good deal for the for their action figures. Why not put out mm -hmm. a Ring of Honor limited series with all these guys? You know, now you could do the CM Punk version of the Ring of Honor toy. Exactly. You know, now you could do all, you got it. This is this is what I do for a living. <laughs> make action figures? Dude, I make you've been making action figures this whole time. Dude, this whole time. Do you want to see my Howard Stern? I would love to see your Howard Stern. Here's my Howard Stern action figure. <laughs> Baba Booey. There you go. Who did the Baba Booey? You know what? I like that joke. It's a good joke. Did he hit Baba Booey? That's a good joke. Oh, uh, he just ran away. Uh, I also make these. Always. I make these and I sell them on Etsy. Oh, those. Uh, what are those? Yeah. Are you a brony? No, no, no. This is uh, this is like like crystals. Like you know how all all the girls are into crystals now. Uh, yeah. I make unicorns and I sell those. When are you gonna start making candles? Oh, that's next, dude. My brother makes candles. Mm. Alec makes candles. Does he really? Everything smells very musky when he makes them. <laughs> uh, no, man. I think this is a you know this is this is how it is. And Ring of Honor was dying. They wanted they wanted to sell. It's not like Tony Wen is like, I'm going to give you a th ton of money that you can't refuse. Uh, Ring of Honor was looking to sell their their product. Uh, I think mm -hmm. it's a great, uh, Joel, I think it's a, it's a good question to ask. You know, does, does two people, three people controlling the entire industry, is that a positive, you know, for the future of it? I think this is all conversations to have. Yeah. You ready for the next one? Great question, though. First yeah, very good. Like very good question. Uh, this is from Michael Reedon, Redden. Uh, and I lost it on the okay, here shoe over here. Big there, Daddy okay, Dave did. Yeah. Okay, you want to read it? Yeah, Big Daddy yeah. Dave did mention that Honor Club streaming service is part of the deal. I think the the commentary was trolling last night, mentioning Euphoria on HBO Max and Jr. saying MJF needs Doctor Milfi. Did they? Did he actually say that? I I didn't hear that at all on commentary. I was actually watching last night over dinner with my wife and we were laughing our asses off because jr made like a outdated like a 20 year old sopranos reference to dr belfi <laughs> like there's no other psychiatrist tv psychiatrist that he could have thought of yeah uh dr kramer dr kramer uh i think for now i mean but i honor club doesn't mean anything like to, it's, yeah. it's it's a bunch of hoops you got to jump through to sign up and you're getting this archive footage that really you don't really have i don't know i i don't think honor club is the answer here i think this is a temporary no. solution until they come up with their their streaming service um uh, which is going to be soon so i don't know i i i have honor club i signed i paid for it and i never watched the thing on there i know i remember you would always say that you'd be like i got this thing that i'm really doing nothing with like i would watch like certain things like when when kenny and the bucks were doing stuff i would go they just it wasn't a yeah. priority for me to 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 look at what Honor Club was doing. Yeah, you know, it, it's not a it's not a financially. Uh, it, there's a different way to make money off of this, a better way than Honor Club. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. Again, Tony's a numbers guy. He's got those stats. I'm sure he's got a, a, yeah. a nice little Excel sheet, um, with everything that he could do. All right, this next one's from James Mordor, 1999. Thank you, James. Enjoy Vegas, fellas. Do Thank you think you. we'll see? AEW invade Supercard of Honor or vice versa with Ring of Honor guys invading Revolution or Dynamite. I mean, are you Russia. saying an invasion? 
No, no. Uh, no, I think, I think we'll probably see those guys at that super card. Considering, you know, uh, you know, here's the thing. Samoa Joe, he's a wild card in this, right? There you go. Um, I, I think that with Punk and Danielson being there for the Hall of Fame, uh, maybe I, I would, I would, I think that's a safe, safe bet. Yeah. All right. Yeah, for sure. Uh, this next one is from Joel Wood, another four ninety nine. Thanks, Joel. What do you think is more likely? Cody Rhodes returns to AEW, Cody Rhodes returns to WWE, or Cody and Brandy return to run Ring of Honor? I think WWE. I would love them to do the Ring of Honor swerve. Oh, man, I think that'd be a great swerve, but I, I, I don't think that's the reality. <laughs> I would, uh, you know what? Yeah, I think the reality, who knows what the reality is, you know, like much like, much like the question of where's Bray, where's Bray Wyatt yeah. slash Wyndham Rotunda, the where's Cody going to go, you know? I think a lot of people know where Bray is, but they're not saying a word. Uh, okay. I'll just put that out there. I think a lot of All people right. know the deal and the situation and I'm, uh, and they're just not talking about it yet. A lot of a lot of players on the board right now. A mm-hmm. lot of interesting moving parts across the world of professional wrestling. This is like a big upheaval, by the way. Like twenty twenty two, right now, crowds are back. People are hot on wrestling. It's going to be an interesting year. Yeah. All right. This is from Kyle Masters. Ten dollars. Thank you, Kyle. Thank you, Kyle. What up, boys? Always a fan. Always a big fan of the shows. Question to you guys is simple today if AEW created their own wwe network type service would you keep pay-per-views on fight or br or free with the AEW network they they make a ton of money on the pay-per-views so let's do the math mm-hmm. i think i think all uh all out had uh 200 over 200,000 buys at 50 dollars a pop right mm-hmm. let's do that math Calculator. Bust out that calculator, bro. 200,000 times 50. They made $5 billion, dude. Oh, no, wow. they, made, they made a ton of money on this show. So, I, I obviously, you split it with the pay-per-view providers. I don't know what that cut agreement generally is 50-50 or 60-40 or whatever mm-hmm. it is. But, you know, why would you give that money up? Uh, I think they're going to continue with the pay-per-view format. Maybe maybe they'll do like a, you know, uh, I don't think fights the answer. I don't mm-hmm. think BR Live is the answer. I don't think that it's it's been serving the need the way it should. But, mm-hmm. you know, HBO doesn't have that ability right now to do pay-per-views. Right. Unless, unless guys, HBO pays them a buttload of money for the content to put it on there. They rene- renegotiate and they figure out like we're gonna make more money giving it away for whatever we're mm-hmm. giving it away for. Um, you know, a lot of this is still up in the air. I don't think they're gonna drop the pay per view model. But if that, with that said, dude, what does that do to the bit? If they drop that pay per view model, right? If they change the pricing to like nine ninety nine a month, yeah. Uh, do you do you get a million people to sign up? I don't think so. I agree with that. Yeah, it's too soon, right? It is. It's too soon to to drop the pay per view. Uh, we'll see what happens. You know, doing it four times a year is good. It's easy. Yeah. But when you now have and and I do expect AEW to add more pay per views in the in in the coming years because four is a little too little. And we saw that the experiment with the uh, Battle of the Belts didn't work out the way yeah, that people. Yeah. You know, that was going to be their in betweens once a quarter. So now you got up to eight pay per views. So, or, or eight specials. Now that that's an hour show, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't positioned as a top Mm pay-per-view. You kind of need to add more. And at what point does it become exhausting to the consumer's wallet? Dishing out $200 a year to watch wrestling is very different than dishing out, you know, $1,600. Right. You know, I'm sorry, uh, uh, $800 or or, or $1,200. You know, it's a lot of money. So we'll see. All right, this next one is from Ryan Evans, five bucks. Thank you, Ryan. Cody booking Ring of Honor makes so much sense. I am one of the few who don't think he will sign with WWE. Regal makes so much sense for the authority figure. Regal would be great. Oh, yeah. uh, you know, and I think with Ring of Honor and, 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 a, and a Regal would be positioned, you know, concentrating on the wrestling and, you know, 
very interesting. Is this is this going to be and, and people not really saying it? Is this is this their NXT competitor? Interesting. You know that that's an interesting uh, thing here. Where is Ring of Honor going to become AEW's NXT competitor? And you know the wrestling will probably be way better. I don't know. You're not going to get the glitz and glam that WWE does with their character mm-hmm. development. We're seeing that already in NXT. I, I I I think this might be interesting to see what happens. Yeah, for sure. Uh, you ready for the next one? Yeah, let's do it. All right, this is uh, from Kyle Masters again. Elite POV. Ten bucks. Thank you, Kyle. Thank you. For Vegas and MG Geek, baby. Nice. Thank you. Uh, we got one from EMC 4K here, 999. Part of AEW's success, aside from its roster, was its booking. Do you see Tony booking both promotions? If not, who's on your short list to book Ring of Honor going forward? Oh, man, that's a great question. I think Tony will be hands up. I, I, again, I, are we, we're going with the assumption that... Uh, we're going with the assumption that they're going to run. Right. So I, I think Tony would be involved. I think I think it'd be more like, I don't know. That's a great question. I think Tony would probably want to be hands on with that. Um, obviously the input of of guys like, you know, Danielson and all those guys would be a huge asset to Ring of Honor, considering they were there mm-hmm. and they understand the philosophy there. Um, I don't know. You think? I think Tony would end up doing it. What do you think? Honestly, like my my straight up gut instinct, give the book to the Bucks. I don't know. Are they good bookers? I don't know. I, think I don't so. know much I, about their booking. I think they could definitely book a top to bottom, like a solid Ring of Honor show. You know. Uh, let's see. This is a comment from Joel Pearl, friend of the show. Cody's coming to SmackDown on Friday. Just you wait and see. Why did he call you? I think he called Joel. Uh, this is from Shin. Chips or popcorn? Hashtag Ask Matt Men. Uh, chips. Yeah, I'm a chips guy, man. Yeah, I don't. I don't I'm like the, a... the kernels getting stuck in my teeth. No, nah, I'm not a fan of farty ass popcorn, man. <laughs> uh, this is from BDZ41 off of Twitch. Could Tony acquire the PWG library as well? I think that would be. You know, he, that's that's a great question because a lot of those guys are in AEW right now. Mm-hmm. A lot of those PWG guys. And PWG's been very protective of their content for years. That's why they never... Everything was DVD. You know, how do you... Yeah. PWG, let's see. Let me go to their website. Let me see what I can... PWG website. And it's funny how they, how they do have, like, Excalibur is, like, so quiet, you know? Like, apart they're, from the, the announcing, it's very it's very fascinating. And they still don't have any streaming content. They're selling Blu-rays. Their website is right yeah. out of, you know, 1999. Right, they're selling right Blu-rays. <laughs> uh, they, there's no... They have no media presence on the internet, really. Mm-hmm. Very little. They put out some stuff. Like, I'm looking at their preview videos. They get about, uh, you know... 22,000 for this video. Uh, PWG Preview Mystery Vortex 7 mm-hmm. does 61,000. You know, I, I think I think the archive footage would be very valuable to them. Those guys all work in PWG. Why, you know, why not? But I don't know if their PWG is interested. Mm-hmm. They've had a very different model than most people. Exactly. They're their own thing. And I think maybe it's one of those things where like they'll forever be kept their own entity. Yeah. Uh, this next one is from Aaron Hedgemowski. Okay. Let's be real here. Mm-hmm. Melter, Keller, Johnson have repeatedly said that the old content viewed on the WWE network really isn't viewed in large numbers. How is AEW really going to monetize this footage? Well, I think that's the case now. Uh, I think mm-hmm. when, when, they, when they initially put everything on there, it was tremendous, the amount of people that were watching the older content you know when the, when all those wcws went up and when all those old raws went up that's all people were talking about mm-hmm. was all the older episodes so i think at one point you know it, it's it, it's time-based you know they put it up people watch it and then they forget about it and then they watched it already i think that this will be interesting to to a core aew following uh but it's more about having the access to create packages for the guys that you have already with that footage. 
That's what yeah. that's what really it, it, it's about. And it's also having the product. Uh, I think they'll do well with this. I think that like I have tremendous interest in seeing a version of those early Ring of Honor matches on the mm. internet that's not yeah. in 240p. Oh yeah, really? You know, I would yeah. love to do that in in a way that I could like go in my go into my bedroom, uh -huh. um, you know, just hanging out. Dim the lights. Turn the lights off. <laughs> Tell Jess to get a bottle of champagne, open up a bottle uh, of Vufka Clo, get in the tub, bring my laptop, and I lock the door, and I just watch Ring of Honor from 2004. Nobody else wants to do that? What happens when you accidentally drop your laptop in the tub? Whoa! <laughs> I, 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 it's like a comedic, it's like a comedy electrocution. <laughs> All the lights start blinking in and out of the house. <laughs> Uh, uh, this next one's from I as Actar, the grape. The I grape. As Actar, I as Actar. But I want you to read it. I want you to read. It. Okay. There we go. Can I do it in his voice? You could do it in his voice or the voice that this requires. Listen, it's a little bit ethnically insensitive, though. Voice, oh no! Right? So I don't want to get canceled for this. You ready? Okay. I'm, I'm going to do a great I as Actar. Scooby Doo, a Ring of Honor crossover incoming. It's called Ro. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good joke. Hey, me and de Blasio, pick up the garbage. Uh, can you do our new governor, uh, the impression of our new governor? Uh, our mayor or governor? Governor. Uh, Hochul? Yeah, Hochul. Uh, I don't even know what she sounds like. I she's think very soft. She she's very, oh, I know what she sounds like. Hey, Eric Adams, time to clean up the subways. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> what he was doing that's good i could listen to that all day i, I maybe you know what's funny one. i think people are so annoyed by it but you and my wife are the only two people that regularly have me do that voice yeah so my wife will look at someone and be like hey uh how about that guy in this scenario what do you think and she always sets up the joke too perfect doing doing improv huh <laughs> yeah i'm doing improv now I do really, really, really get a kick out of that voice. And I think we've done it consistently for the last like 100 episodes. Uh, that hurt my chest. Uh, he Sorry. Has, he has actually, Mike, Mikey Dreamer in Twitch says, pretty sure all of Conrad Thompson's podcasts get views on old content. That's exactly, that's very true. I think there that is, is a niche for this. There definitely is a niche. Uh, let's see. We got another super chat here from EMC4K. Being that Ring of Honor has no contracted wrestlers currently, do you send heavy hitters like Mox or Danielson and make ROH less of an NXT developmental and more of a raw Smackdown relationship to Dynamite? I think that's very dangerous. I think Ooh, that's very, very that. dangerous because I, I actually I have a very unpopular opinion and I think Rampage is a detriment to the overall product of AEW. I think it's a detriment to, to, mm. to Dynamite. Because you're taking guys uh, strategically and you're moving them for ratings on another show that's not positioned as important as your main show. Right. And, and we know why Tony had to do it. Tony, they, they, Turner wanted, Warner Media wanted a third hour of Dynamite. And this was the compromise here. So, you know, I, I get it. I get why they're doing it. Uh, obviously, uh, the more content you're creating, the more ad revenue you're generating and the more revenue for you you're generating. But... If you move these guys now to another area, what does that do? How does that diminish your main product? I, I, I've said this from day one. I, I get the concept of Rampage, but putting it on a Friday at 10 o'clock, you set yourself up already for a rough position. And you're going you're gonna to bring out heavy guns like a CM Punk or a Danielson or a Moxley on that show. And guess what you're doing? You're taking them away from the main thing that's drawing the eyeballs. So... I know that there's yeah. a balance here and, and they're attempting the balance and I don't think they're doing a bad job at it, at the balance, but mm -hmm. Rampage will never do more than 600,000 people. Maybe 700. Maybe. Maybe. You know, like uh, on, a, on like a big mega night, you do 700,000. Okay. But it's a 500,000 to, you know, 600,000 viewer show. And I think that's great. But do you put a guy like Danielson and CM Punk and Moxley and... Uh, on that show regularly i don't know i don't think so yeah that's a good question and you know who knows what the future will hold i think we'll know better within the next like month or two right yeah uh let's see here this is from uh, bc night on twitch hashtag ask matt men ask the matt men i'm going to get slammed for this 
But should Tony Khan and Warner Media pull the plug on Rampage and replace it with Ring of Honor? I don't think they can. Yeah, you know, I thought about that too, by the way. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, do you convert that into a Ring of Honor show on Fridays? For, I mean, that, that would be the great, that would be, you could keep Ring of Honor intact. Uh, you could have it in the same building. You could, uh, you know, it. you could do something with that. But I don't know, longevity wise, what that means to the ratings. Is a Ring of Honor brand as big as Rampage? You know, that's mm -hmm. a good question. I don't know. I don't have those metrics. I, I'm sure that. Uh, Tony's going to consider that, you know, looking at that, what with does Rampage have more value than, than a Ring of Honor? Yeah, I think at this point. And that, by the way, and then th here's the thing maybe you could, maybe you move, uh, you know, your, T your, your TNT title or your TBS title gets defended in that. But mm -hmm. other than that, you don't get to see Moxley and Danielson and Omega and those guys that often on that show, if ever. Right. Yeah. You know, I don't, I, it, it I think Ring of Honor should be used more of a developmental product, and you could take, you know, one of one of the, the show that you're filming in Universal, rebrand that as Ring of Honor, mm -hmm. and you start building talent that way. And now you have a competitor, and maybe you put that on HBO Max, and that becomes the HBO Max show. Yeah, hey, there you go. That's a good solution. Original content, but, first run content. Yeah, and I'll up those uh, HBO Max subscriptions too. I like HBO Max a lot, dude. Same here. It's my favorite. Yeah. Uh, this this is interesting. This next one's going to, I feel like uh, we're going to touch on our philosophy with wrestling here. Uh, this is from Ryan Armstrong. Mm -hmm. uh, Daniel Bryan faced Dean Ambrose twice in WWE. Do your homework, fellas. This match between Daniel Bryanson and John Moxley is a match we saw before in WWE. It's not, though. I mean, we saw this match. You saw two. You saw those two people have a match. Yeah, but not this. Not an AEW we haven't seen this match. Right. I, I I didn't say that they've never had a match. I think it's, it's the first the time in AEW. Yeah, there you're not going to get the same exact. I think people yeah. would lose their mind if they saw a typical WWE match on AEW television. Right. Like yeah. I think people are just waiting for that. They're waiting for that moment to see like a two minute nonsense match so they can take a bigger dump on AEW. Yeah, but listen, we saw uh, we, we've seen a lot of matches, but it's not it's not always the same match, you know? You, yeah. There's a there's a different style level in WWE. There's a different work rate in WWE. Uh, mm. These guys were programmed differently. There were different producers, different agents. You know, these are all different. These are all factors when you're building the match. And mm -hmm. I feel like these guys, this is the closest we'll come to them being unrestricted in any way of having a match. And we didn't get to see this match in AEW. Right, right. And it would be a very different match, much like if we see we saw Punk versus Ambrose a billion times. I think if they finally have like a match, it'll be different, right? Yeah. Uh, let's see what else we got here. MG, you're going to have to start adding some more questions to the queue. Uh, let's just take them right from the chat room. Here you go. Ryan Pittinger says, I can see AW bringing the ROH six man titles into the fold since they've been rumored to start six man titles since the creation of AW. Is that, is that question on the screen? There we go. I can see AW bringing, uh, yeah, the trio titles coming. Uh, I, I, I think Dave mentioned this. I love that Wolverine cover, by the way. Uh, I think Dave mentioned mm -hmm. it on Observer Radio where, uh, it looks like they're waiting for Kenny to return. But this oh, yeah. was discussed. I mean, this was. I mean, we're talking two years now. We're talking about this, and and more and more mm -hmm. now, you're you're seeing the the word trio use, six man use a lot more on AEW TV, and that's all strategic. That's to put it in the back of your mind, like okay, trio, trio, trio. This is what it means. This is what it is. Uh, I think when Kenny comes back, we'll we'll start getting to that. But they could definitely use a trios title. Yeah. Uh, here's here's one that's kind of been floating around, and I'm just gonna pick one. Uh, at random, but a lot of people have asked this question. Is Tony yeah. going to buy Impact next? You know, it, it, that would be the trifecta, right? That would be it. I don't know if he's going to. I don't. Do they want to sell? Does Anthem want to sell Impact? Mm. I think right now they're on a channel that is theirs. Um, Their ratings are going up, not down. You know, they've they've seen some growth, like 10 to 15 percent growth uh, some weeks, 20 percent growth some weeks. Uh, but Brandon Thurston does a great job with those numbers. If you're interested in those numbers, mm -hmm. go follow him on Twitter. 
Uh, I, I, I think that if you have access to that footage, to that impact footage, I don't know what does Impact Plus make. Do they have a lot of subscribers? Yeah, that's a good question. Let's see, Impact Plus. Um, you know, I think Impact would be worth more than Ring of Honor right now. They they have oh, they're airing something right mm -hmm. now on Impact Plus. When you go oh, there. let's watch it. <laughs> uh, what are they putting? Let's see. Uh, it is. Oh, it says we are experiencing technical difficulties. I think I broke of course them. they are. Uh, I don't know. You know what kind of how much is Impact Plus? Let's see. You get the pay per views. It is seventy one dollars a year, seven ninety nine a month. <laughs> they're gonna say you could also watch for free without a subscription, and you could watch and it has an app. You could watch on all the app stores. So, Great. um, I don't know. I don't know if that's a reality or not. I think that if they could, they would, but get access to that archive, but. I think Impact is in a far better position right now than Ring of Honor is. Obviously, look at that title. They got Moose as a champion, Mickey James, uh, Mickey James as a Knockout Worlds champion. They have Trey uh, Miguel mm -hmm. as the X Division champion. Digital Media champion is Matt Cardona. You got the Good Brothers as the tag champions, and you got um, uh, uh, the Inspiration as tag champions. I mean, they there got a go. pretty, they got a good looking roster too. They got a very they good do. looking roster. They do. They, I'm they a big very fan of Chris do. Bay, by the way. Chris Bay is great. Newest addition to the Bullet Club, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I. That's a great question. I don't know. I, mm. I never say never, but I think Impact is in a far better position than, than uh, what what ROH is doing right now, which is so sad because yeah. I fucking love ROH. You know. I know, I know. It's very interesting, you know. But again, the upheaval of uh, pro wrestling and the landscape, uh, we're gonna we're gonna see some very fun stuff in the next like year. Yeah. Uh, you want to do one more question? Yeah, and let's then get out of here. Yeah. All right. This is from Iaz again. The grape hanging out with his bunch, his bunches. Uh, doesn't ROH still have titles floating around? What happens with those? That's a good question. Yeah, they do. Um, you know, the deal was just recently signed, so I, I envision that they're going to continue the ring, uh, the uh, the Impact stuff because they, they do have a decent relationship mm -hmm. with Impact, you know? But, you know, this is just another... Uh, this is just another little uh, addition to, to, to the world of Tony Khan. You know, right now, like, I think... The, mm -hmm. the, here, here's one thing I'm going to say. AEW has a lot of great talent that is not being utilized in a position they should be. Exactly. Right? Like, Jay White right now is an interesting conversation to have. This guy mm -hmm. is obviously the future of pro wrestling over the next decade. Yes. Uh, you know, maybe you don't see him as that guy today, but Seth Rollins wasn't considered that guy when he showed up. Uh, right. He, this guy's 29 years old. He's young. He, he's great in the ring. He's a good promo. So what happens to him? You know, what happens to a moose in, the, in, in, in wrestling? Exactly. You know who's who's a Ring of Honor champion right now? Is it Gresham? I th I want to say yes. Uh, you know I think it's it's also a matter of like, listen, not not all your favorite guys are going to be on top. You know as much yeah, as like, you I, want. I know Swerve's coming to AEW. Possibly Cesaro too, right? Cesaro's a free agent now. You could do something with him. Uh, Bandito. You know, you have such abundant talent available in pro wrestling, and mm. it just shows you how good wrestling has become. It, it, really, it really shows. I mean, I can't remember a time that we had this much quality. I mean, real, this much quality talent. Not oh, making yeah. excuse Like, talent that you don't make excuses about, you know? Like, I'm exactly. saying. Exactly. Like, like, oh, he could be good. Oh, he's great. Okay, I'll give you one. Um, mm -hmm. Shoot. I'll give you one. Let me let me just double check. Okay, Scott Norton, okay? Okay. Scott Norton was a tremendous powerlifter, tremendous wrestler, did great in Japan. Mm -hmm. IWGP heavyweight champion. Okay? Yes. He was lost in WCW. Yeah, I think that's a fascinating... He was lost. Fascinating it, thing. It, wouldn't have, it didn't make sense for him. Like, it, it didn't... They never pushed him as this yeah. giant, you know, over guy like you did in Japan. It just worked in the territory. And you're going to get that in AEW. You're going to have guys that were big acts in a certain territory. And it's just not working. 
in AEW. And it's going to be disappointing to a lot of people. But when you have a big roster like this, this is what happens. I'm very curious to see where these guys go. There's a lot of great talent. And I think we have one last super chat. Yeah, from Joel Wood, 499. Thanks, Joel. Thank you, Has Joel. Has Roxy signed with WWE? I think she did. Didn't she sign? Am I wrong here? I'm not sure. I think there was a... I think there was like a lot of hubbub around around what was happening with her, you know, since Yeah, I you know, go ahead. I don't know. I I, I thought she she was going there. By the way, WWE's holding tryouts mm -hmm. uh WrestleMania weekend. Uh it, it it will be holding try uh multi-day tryout exclusive to current and recently graduated college athletes during WrestleMania week mm -hmm. in early April. As it's looking to find a new crop of future talent, the Atlantic has learned. This is uh, via the Atlantic. The company also has talent evaluators at this week's NFL Combine. Wow, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. And a national and national scouting combine in search for more participants. I do think Roxy would fare better off in WWE, to be honest with you. I think Roxy would do well in WWE. Yeah, she would because WWE has a way of making their signed female talent like into really big deals really fast. Yeah, we've seen what they're doing in NXT. They're doing a great job with that. Oh yeah, they, there's nothing they can't do with that women's division. You know, yeah. like they really it's it's interesting how they build so many female stars, and it's interesting also how like the NXT. I feel like the the males have been suffering in NXT for the last couple of years. Yeah, says a lot about the developmental program right now. Mm -hmm. Terrible. All right, I think that's it, guys. I think we're done. How long yeah. Do An hour 40, almost two hours here, guys. Look at that. Holy moly. Big show. Guys, we're going to be back this Sunday. I'll be back with Wrestling Observer Live Hour 1 with a guest. Hour 2 is a Matt Men Takeover where we run down AEW Revolution and talk about everything coming up on the pay-per-view. Right after that, we're going straight bam into our watch along for AEW revolution so sunday night we're gonna be live with you guys for a while so grab a couple drinks order your food start hitting that super chat well that's the goal with this one we're gonna fund it uh to uh get the boys to vegas hell yeah all right uh where can people find you rich you can find me on my uh, chosen social media platform of choice that is twitter at btc rich you can find me on Twitter at Andrew Zarian. Uh, also, Matt Men Podcast. Everywhere podcasts are available. And on the Wrestling Observer website, F4WOnline.com. We'll be back next week. See you all later. Later.